Good morning. My claim to fame is that I drew this giraffe. <laughs> and I have to admit, it does get mixed reviews. <laughs> Some people say the eye is too big, and that real artists have a sense of proportion. Others say that it's charmingly crude, and it reminds them of critters seen roaming about on Paleolithic cave art. <laughs> and then there are those who say it would feel more at home on their fridge doors. <laughs> Ouch. But after I tell people some things about my giraffe, even the hardcore skeptics usually come around. I tell them, for example, that from head to front hoof, she stands 11 kilometers tall. I tell them that I drew her upside down, that her out of proportion eye is actually the same size and shape as the ring road at Beacon Hill Park, and that to draw her, I had to travel 115 kilometers of Victoria's streets. And then I tell them that I drew her with this. In fact, I've drawn a lot of pictures with my bicycle and one of these. It's a GPS tracking device. And this is a pastime that I have called GPS doodling. <laughs> now, when I mount this device on my handlebars and ride around town, it collects data from GPS satellites. It, it records my speed, my distance, my elevation, and so on. It's actually meant as a training tool. And when I upload that data to a website called Strava.com, I can analyze my performance and see how I rank against other athletes in the area. What's even cooler, though, is the thin red line that traces every move I make on a map. Now, right from the get-go, I knew that this red line held a heap of creative potential. And last January 1st, when I crept out into the frosty darkness and scrawled Happy 2015 <laughs> on the streets of Victoria, I discovered what it was. Now, I'll admit this first doodle was crude and rudimentary, but it was transformational. After this, my bike was no longer a bike. It was a crimson-dipped paintbrush, and the entire city was my canvas. GPS doodling gave me a way to inject a sense of purpose into my rides. It gave me a way to disguise exercise as urban exploration and creative expression, a way to make exercise fun. Now, let's be brutally honest about exercise for a minute. <laughs> I know there are some people out there who love swimming laps and jazzercising and going to the gym. But for most of us, getting fit and staying fit feels a lot more like this. <laughs> it's tedious, it's repetitive, it's uninspiring, it's hellish. You know, I, I love cycling, and cycling can be exhilarating, but I'll be the first to admit that it can also be mind-numbingly dull, especially when you ride the same roads and the same routes day in and day out. GPS doodling changes everything. Now, three hours on a bike is no longer just a chore for the sake of a healthy heart. Now, three hours on the bike is this. <laughs> this. <laughs> this. <laughs> or this. <laughs> GPS doodling, it's reignited my passion for cycling, and it's actually taken my cycling life to an unprecedented level. In more than 30 years as a serious cyclist, I rarely broke 10,000 kilometers in a season. This year alone, I have already ridden 20,000 kilometers. That is like riding your bike from Victoria to Miami, Miami to Paris, Paris to Dubai, and Dubai to Kathmandu, halfway around the globe. And those roads I ride, they're not always flat. That's Mount Everest. I've climbed that elevation on my bike 17 times this year already. <laughs> and I have spent 700 hours in the saddle. That's like spending the entire month of February in a leap year, day and night, on your bike. <laughs> now, I will admit, not all of that time and distance is spent GPS doodling. But I've done 70 doodles this year, and they average 70 kilometers a piece. 
So that's 5,000 kilometers just having fun drawing pictures on my bike. Sometimes GPS doodling demands more than sweat. Sometimes it draws blood. This is the remains of a truck that cut me off one day mid-doodle. Now, I did take it mostly on the shoulder, but a little on the chin, and yes, there was blood. And what's sweat and blood without some tears? There were a couple doodles in particular that caused me some grief. The first is one that I call my Strava selfie, because everybody has to take a selfie. It was actually my second doodle, my follow-up to Happy 2015. And I was more than 30 kilometers into it when I lost my way, and I botched my nose. <laughs> and it was back to the start with an important lesson. A GPS device doesn't come with an eraser. <laughs> so I learned early on to, drive, to ride carefully. The second doodle that caused me some angst was one that I call my, my mermaid of the Salish Sea. She was my biggest doodle ever. And it was also the first time that I really experimented with a technique that I call connecting the dots. I discovered quite by accident that if I pause my device at point A and restart it at point B, those lines connect, or those dots connect with a straight line. And I used this technique to bring detail into some of my doodles where the roads don't cooperate. The trouble is, it requires a lot of pinpoint stopping and starting, and so it's slow going. And I knew that my mermaid was going to take all day, so I left the house at 5 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Well, I had three flat tires, I ran into a torrential rainstorm, I had hunger, I had mechanical issues, I was starting to despair, and I actually hadn't even gotten to the start, starting line yet. <laughs> it was three hours and two trips home to fix repairs before I actually got going on the doodle. And my wife said to me on my second trip home, isn't this the universe just telling you to come back to bed? <laughs> and I said, no, this is the universe testing my commitment to doodling this bloody mermaid. <laughs> so I was off again. 212 kilometers and 14 hours on the bike later, she was done. And I have to say, she's quite a beauty. Wow. Mm. It's thanks to doodles like this that I'm as fit at 50 as I've ever been. But fitness is really just one part of the GPS doodling equation. And the other is creative expression. Now, I'm sure that you've all heard people say, oh, I wish I was creative. I just don't have a creative bone in my body. Well, maybe not. But you all have a right brain, the epicenter of creativity and expression. And in each of us, I believe, is a deep desire to create and express. And what excites me most about GPS doodling is it takes the intimidation out of artistic expression. If you can move, you can doodle. You can do this on your bike, you can do this on a walk, you can do this on a skateboard. I actually intentionally called it GPS doodling because the word art can be a bit lofty and exclusive. Everybody doodles and anybody can GPS doodle. So it doesn't surprise me that the question I get asked most often is how. How do you create these huge and elaborate doodles? How can I get started? What I tell people is, you don't actually create them. You discover them. They're in the map just waiting to be found. This is the map that I use to plan my doodles. And at a glance, there's nothing particularly inspiring that jumps off the page. The game changer for me was when I outlined all of Victoria's main and connecting roads. All of a sudden, images and ideas just started to pop off the page, like clouds, like shapes in the clouds. This shape, for instance, soon became my Wicked Witch of the West Coast. <laughs> this shape, you can probably guess, became a little digger, one for the kitties. <laughs> now, this shape niggled at me for months, and only recently did I flesh it out into a character that I call the muscle-bound thug. And he's now appeared in three doodles. Uh, here he is plucking a gator by the tail from the Salish Sea. <laughs> 
throttling a turkey on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> and please note the pilgrim hat. And here he is, riding a grizzly bear in a pork pie hat, standing in a snowbank. <laughs> now, any weirdness, and I, I, I admit there's weirdness, I just find these in the map. You have to blame Victoria City planners for any <laughs> strangeness. And then there was this, of course, uh, the shape that jumped out at me the most, and that became my giraffe. I've, I've named her Garmina. My GPS device is a Garmin, uh, so this is a little nod to that. And it makes me smile to know that for as long as Victoria's streets have been here, so has she. I have to admit, the last 11 months have been quite a ride. What started out as a pastime has actually garnered worldwide attention. Last March, I saw my blog go from 59 views one day to nearly 12,000 the next. And on Strava.com alone, I have, I have followers now in 60 countries watching and waiting for my next GPS doodle. It's a lot of pressure, <laughs> and it's also very exciting, but that's not what drives me to do it. GPS doodling has led me to explore many new roads, and that's the perfect metaphor for its appeal. As creative beings, we are driven to explore, to express ourselves, and to exploit media in new and intriguing ways. And since you're all creative beings, I'd like to challenge you to give it a try. Start your GPS device, go for a walk or a ride around the block, and voila. It's your first GPS doodle, and do you know what it is? It's a window. <laughs> One through which, if you look carefully, you will see infinite opportunities for creative expression, exhilarating adventure, and all sorts of fun. <laughs> Explore. <laughs> <laughs> Explore, experiment, express yourself. On your bike or your own two feet, the possibilities are limitless. Thank you.